AFC Championship. Third seeded Chiefs at the top seeded Ravens. Sixth straight year the Chiefs are in the AFC Championship. First time the Ravens are in the AFC Championship since 2012 when they ultimately went to the Super Bowl and won it. The Ravens are favored by three and a half points. The over-under is 44.5. And according to DraftKings, 67% of the spread money is on the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Chris, you've picked the Chiefs to lose five times this year. I've picked them to lose twice. I've picked the Ravens to lose seven times. You've picked them to lose three times. I don't know how relevant any of that is to Sunday, but it is factual. It is historical. It is based on what we've done this year. So who do you pick to win? And who do you pick to lose on Sunday in the first of the two conference championship games? I mean, you know, first off, what a matchup, right? I mean, two AFC powerhouses really here through the last decade. Uh, um, We know that. I mean, two quarterbacks who both have two MVPs. We know Lamar's about to receive his. Uh, I mean, you've heard me talk. I mean, the Chiefs. Play, like we started the show, playoffs, Mahomes, I, you know, playoffs, Chiefs. It's, it's incredible that they could be that inconsistent and all over the place the whole regular season and then get in the playoffs and go, nah, we're ready. We're detailed. We don't mess up anymore. We're going to function like the most high-functioning offense you've ever seen in football. I mean, that's what they did last week. They showed signs of that the first week against the Dolphins. So it's incredible that way. I'm amazed by the Chiefs. And as you said all day today, right, the Chiefs aren't going to be, like, enamored or scared or wide-eyed in this situation. You know, when you win the Super Bowl coming back the way they did, no, there's no such thing as pressure anymore. You know, it's like, oh, we've been there in the hardest, most pressure spots. Going here, AFC Championship game, that's not that hard, right? A team that they feel like they probably have had gotten the better of more times than not. So, I mean, let's go. Where do you want to start here? Chiefs O, Ravens D, I think maybe I'll start there. You know, here, here's the thing for me, Mike, and I'll pose some of these questions for you too because I don't know these answers. I'm interested to see how this plays out too. The Chiefs have become a little bit more smash mouth, right? Last week you saw I, that might have been the most balanced attack I've ever seen the Chiefs and Andy Reid have. I mean, Patrick Mahomes threw the ball 22 times. They ran the ball. You know, it was almost, I think it was 55, 45, 60, 40, but that's damn good for the Chiefs, right? Running the ball, Playing that type of game, their O-line, it's become part of their football team, right? So that's where I go, and they had success doing that last week. They dominated the line of scrimmage. Now, it's the Ravens, though, this week, right, Mike? The Ravens, the biggest, baddest on the planet up on the front seven, right? I mean, we talk about it every offseason. They just pillage the biggest, baddest dudes there are. They're like, come to our team. We're the Ravens. If a fight breaks out, we're going to kick the shit out of everybody in football, right? So... Do the, do the Chiefs want to play that route? Do they want to play th- two, three tight ends, try to run the ball? You know, or are they banging their head against the, the, the wall a little bit? Or do you take the approach of, wait, you know, the Ravens, they do a lot on defense. If we spread the field a little bit, it might show their disguises and who's blitzing, and we have a really smart quarterback who knows how to fix protections and, and block everybody up. Do we want to do that and kind of put the game into Mahomes to pick them apart in the pass game? And I would say the Ravens are more big than they are fast. They have a pretty good blend of both, but I would say size is where they're most impressive. Do they go that route and then go, hey, what do you want to do, Ravens? Do you want to do you want to blitz us and play man and we're the Chiefs and we got some creative ways to beat that? Or do you want to play zone? And, oh, then then maybe, you know, hey, this is Mahomes. He can pick a part of his own. So that's where I think it could be interesting because the Chiefs have swayed a little bit towards ugliness, power football. This is who we are. But they're going against an animal this week that, you know, we said earlier today and you said earlier today, you don't want to get in a phone booth fight with this guy. They love phone booth fights, the Baltimore Ravens. So, you know, I'll leave it to you and your thoughts there. And just that's one thing that definitely intrigues me about the matchup, Mike. I would want to play to my strengths if I'm the Chiefs, and my biggest strength is Patrick Mahomes is one of the great quarterbacks of all time. He finds a new level in moments like this. He's hyper-aware of legacy. He's two wins away from getting to number three by way of Super Bowl championships as he tries to catch Tom Brady's seven. So you're going to see a more locked in. Certain guys just thrive in those moments. 
Joe Burrow, for example, he reaches a higher level of performance in the postseason. Mahomes is the same way. I mean, Mahomes has a pretty high level in the regular season, as does Burrow, but he kind of quietly morphs into a next-level superhero when these games roll around. And you don't hear any talk about it. I said last week, watching him play the Bills, he's just got that sideline demeanor when yeah. Chiefs are on defense of somebody who's just ready at the drop of a hat to go do what needs to be done. He's not stressed out by anything. He's anxious, but he's not nervous. He's excited, but he's not rattled. And he's just, there's everything about the way he's like, he's edge of the seat. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready at all times. And then he goes out there and he does his thing. So I would spread him out. I would force them to cover Travis Kelsey, Rasheed Rice, who is coming along. Marquez right. Valdez Scantling, who has figured out how to, you know, hold on to the football. Yeah. And again, this is about next level. And then you mix in runs creatively. Isaiah Pacheco is one of the angriest runners that I can remember. And to put him on the Chiefs, I think that's one of the reasons why they're running so much. They yeah, realize this sure. guy can move the sticks. This guy can set a tone. This guy softens them up. And then we slice them and dice them in the passing game. And and if you do it right, you zig when they think you're going to zag. You get them, you know, you get them fatigued. You get them in a position where Mahomes running around buying time. I mean, that's the key. Even if the pass rush begins to get to him, what do we see from Mahomes? We see him moving around, buying time until somebody gets open. So I'd spread him out. I'd put it on Mahomes. I still wouldn't ignore the running game, yeah. but I would definitely put it on Mahomes. I don't want it to be something where the Ravens can just resort to brute strength because I think it's easier for them to not – become odd by the moment if yeah. it's just bang, 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 bang. I hear you. I want it to be, oh, wait, this coverage, this coverage, wait, this guy's here, this guy's here. Oh, wait, don't go that way. Oh, shit, there's a touchdown. I would rather get them where they have to think, not where they just have to go straight ahead, if that makes any sense. No, no, I, I think that that's fair to say. I, I hear you. I hear you there, right? I mean, that's why I, I think it's – I agree with a lot of what you said there. I'm with you, you know. There, there's a part of me, though, that also goes, damn, you know, the first off, Joe Tooney's health of the football game, let's not forget, that's going to be very important. He's an all-pro guard. He is the best pass-protecting guard in football. He's got to go against Justin Matabuke, who we know is one of the best pass-rushing D tackles in football. That'll be an issue. You know, let alone Crean Humphrey, he was an all-pro last year. You know, uh, Trey, Trey Smith, the other guard, he's a damn good player. He is. You know, so that's where I also look at it and go, you know, this is one of the strengths of the Ra the Chiefs football team, too, is to go run it up the middle and dominate that part of the field. Like last week, when they they start, like the, the Bills started to go, oh, no, they're running on us and they're pushing our D line back four, plays every, four yards every play. You know what happened, too, Mike, and this is where I posed the question, and I'm not sure, is the Bills, started, the Bills don't like to play man-to-man. -man. They started to go, we got to load the box and play man-to-man. -man. And then what happened? Mahomes had a deep pass to Valdez Scantling. He had another deep pass to Valdez Scantling, right? They got three 30-plus yard air throws, which I don't think Mahomes has had in two years. And that was because of the run game. So that's where it is interesting. But I think like you, I lean more on the spread it out thing too. Spread it out. If they play total coverage, trust that Mahomes can get to the run game check and do that. Also, you brought up the Ravens pass rush. As we've talked about, the Ravens' pass rush as a front four is not special, and the Chiefs can protect the passer. I mean, you saw the game last week. Mahomes sat back there. He could have baked two cakes, put icing on it, had a few bites, put it in the fridge, and he still could throw the football. So that's, too, where I think I lean on what you're saying as well is spreading them out because now the Ravens might have to show their blitzes, and I just don't think you're going to fool Mahomes and Andy Reid all that much. Uh, with Mahomes in that type of position. One last point, too. If you get them to drop into coverage and they're not blitzing and Mahomes has time to wait and see if he finds someone, remember the extra ingredient that Mahomes brings. Even though it's not the same explosion and speed and suddenness that you see when Lamar Jackson decides to run, right. what you see from Patrick Mahomes is that that Harlem Globetrotters yeah, that leaving in slow motion and right. everybody's standing around and they don't know what to do and he knows how to get past a guy who's just kind of like flailing at air like the Washington Generals. I mean, it's it's comical at times. He had a run like that against the Bills and it conjured memories and Nansen Romo mentioned 
the run from four years ago against the Titans in the AFC Championship where he made it to the end zone and it felt like they were just standing around watching him. They didn't know what to do. He's good for one of those as well, a game, especially if you're not putting so much pressure on him that he feels like he can slip around the corner and off he goes. Yeah, I, I agreed. That's where it, it's, it's dangerous to blitz him that way, you know, no matter what, because he can avoid it and – you know, one, yeah, he can run like you're talking about, but when he's really the best is he avoids the blitz, makes a move, and now he, he's running to the line of scrimmage with his eyes up or he sets up and he looks you over here and all of a sudden he throws some laser over there and you go, oh, shit, we blitzed, we missed, we got holes in the back end, and now they got a 25-yard gain out of it. And that's why nobody really wants to blitz Mahomes and all that. Uh, but I think the Ravens, and some situations are going to have to because I think they're going to look at it and go, damn, I, you know, they, they can block up front. I don't know if our front four will get there. We're going to have to send some people there to take away some of those scramble lanes, let alone, you know, uh, just to apply pressure on Mahomes because he could have all day if it's just the front four. He's one of those guys that's so good at everything he does that it causes your brain to lock up and you don't know what. Like, once he starts moving toward the line of scrimmage, like, what do I do here? What do I do? Yeah, like I, last week, pass, he did the fake shovel run. pass. What do I do? Right, right, right. He does it all. I mean, he might throw a jump hook. He might throw a shovel pass up in the air. He might throw it underhand. So you're, like, running at him, and you're like, oh, no, I got to tackle this guy who's a pretty good athlete. And yet, in the back of your mind, you're going, I've seen 75 highlights of this guy doing crazy shit and throwing the ball around guys like me so you're like oh no and then he runs and then you're like oh shit now I look like a fool because I went through all his fakes and you know you, you're yeah you're, he's the slippery as hell there is no doubt about it he is a, a special special guy but that's the key you feel like if you commit you're going to be the mouse in a cat and mouse yeah, game right and if you don't commit you're going to freeze long enough that he's just going to go right by you. Yeah. It's, it's a hell of a dilemma yep. for a defensive player because you don't know what to do, and he always finds a way to get away from you no matter what you do. All right, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens offense. they got a great running game. Dalvin Cook got on the field last week. Obviously, they're trusting him over Melvin Gordon. They can move the ball. They've got the pass catchers. And again, as we were talking about earlier on PFT Live, unleash Lamar Jackson as a runner in these high-stakes games because you're not worried about a late-season ankle injury or knee injury or foot injury or any other injury that would knock him out. You're going for the brass ring. Dangerous offense against a defense that has held its own for most, uh, most of the year. Yeah. What do you expect from Baltimore's offense against Kansas City's defense? Yeah, uh, I mean, awesome defense. You know I love Spags. You love Spags. We all love Spags. I mean, he's special. He's game plan specific. He does do new things all the time. So how can you not enjoy this little chess match here, right? I mean, now, the, the, the last week was preparation for the Chiefs a little bit. I, I will say that. The fact that you got to play Josh Allen the week before you play Lamar Jackson, you know, I know Josh Allen's not as fast as Lamar Jackson, but – in theory, plays a lot like him in a lot of ways. Quarterback design runs, the scrambling, the running. Got to have a QB spy there. I think that'll be part of the Chiefs game plan, right? All of that. The Chiefs are certainly a versatile defense, great at zone, great at man, can rush the, 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 the quarterback with four and be really good, and then can be one of the most creative blitzing teams in football too. Here's a little bit you know, like we talked about the other side, I got some dilemmas for you. I mean, again, if you're the Chiefs, right, the Chiefs, the one thing that I worry about is you heard me say earlier today, William Gay, where's his health going to be? He's a phenomenal middle linebacker. Derek Nottie, all right, the defensive tackle, his health, where's he going to be, right? Because if there was one weakness I saw last week or what worries me a little bit is when Chris Jones is not in the game, the Chiefs worry about their run defense. And they play a little bit. They call the game when he's out like, hey, we got to protect these backup D tackles. We got to protect them. We got to do stuff there to stop the run and do that, which, you know, I like and all that. But doing that too much in this matchup could be scary. Oh, we're going to load the box. We're going to blitz people here. All right. Well, now you're playing man to man on the outside. Right. And now we know that, hey, the Chiefs can play, can play some man to man. They're good at it, but it's man to man against 
possibly like four big time difference makers if Mark Andrew plays. I mean, Bateman, OBJ, Zay Flowers, that's hard to win all those matchups, right, Mike? So, and it's Lamar Jackson who's like, oh, wait, he's open by that much? I can throw it in there and throw a laser and eat that shit. All right. So that's where it's a little different than maybe Tua with his weapons, where they're like, well, he can't even throw it in here if it's tight. So we're not worried about it. And I, I'm interested to see the attack there by the Chiefs as far as that's concerned. My general thought is this, and it's a twist on the Bill Belichick approach to defensive football, which has always been take away what the other side does best I hear offensively. You. I think for a game like this, yeah. when you consider the psychology of it, right? when you consider the Chiefs are in their sixth straight AFC championship, for the Ravens, it's a first time for every player on the field. Yeah. I'd have to look at the roster to see if somebody came from a team that played in an NFC. Kyle Van Noy, right? Did, but he was you he know. was injured. Van Noy's been there. Yeah. Cook wasn't playing in 2017 right. when the Vikings made it. I mean, there may be a few guys who can help. Yeah. But collectively, this is new for them. Right. My approach would be, and this gets to what I was saying as it relates to the Chiefs offense. Same thing for the Chiefs defense. Take away the thing that's easier. Because I think if you let them do the thing that's easier, they are less likely to freak out. They're more likely to build confidence. And then they're more, more likely to do the more difficult thing well if they build some confidence. So I would take away the easy stuff. I would take away the running game. I would force Lamar Jackson to be accurate early in the game. Yep, okay. Like Baker Mayfield told you last week. Yeah. And even though – the reason was the Bucks were in a hostile environment. Still, you don't want to have negative plays. You don't want to have turnovers early. You're going to be more aware of that. You're going to be feeling more nervous. That's the time to kind of bait the Ravens into making a mental error, not a physical error, because physically it's just it's it's easier. And yeah, you feel agreed. better. You know, hey, we ran for seven yards. We ran for eight yards. We ran for ten yards. All right, we're feeling good. Play action. Boom, 50-yard touchdown. I want to force them to manage their emotions because the emotions are more likely to affect the brain than it is the body. So offense and defense, I want to put them in a spot where they got to think clearly yeah, right. at a time when they feel their pulse in their neck and they know that this is a bigger deal than any game they've ever played in before. That, I, that would be my general approach to concocting offensive and defensive game plan. I like what you're saying there. I, I tend to think that's what they'll do as well because here's the next angle to that, right? One, you heard me say, I, you know, hey, listen, if the Chiefs just play it straight up on the D-line against those big f on the uh, uh, Ravens O-line – I don't think they can hang in there gap for gap, like, and just hang in there, right? I think they got to create a little chaos. The Texans did good with that with their speed up front last week, creating a little chaos in the run game. The Chiefs have an athletic front to do that as well, let alone, Mike, to your point, and I think the most important thing here, yeah, make them uncomfortable. We got good corners, and I still was not overly impressed with the Ravens' blitz plan last week against the Houston Texans. I was not, right? It, the whole first half, they had issues with it. The second half, their answer was basically throw the ball quick and quarterback design run. And I think now you blitz, you stop the run, you maybe contain Lamar, because if you just rush forward, he's going to have some passes where he's going to have all day. So now you maybe contain him, get him to throw the ball a little quicker, plus – you're not the Texans. You can play better man than they can and do some of the things I think you alluded to. I think that's where it's interesting. I think that's what I expect from the Chiefs, that they kind of test that element of the Ravens' offense and kind of pressure Lamar and do some of that stuff. I'll go first since I'm the one holding the lead, and I don't want you to be suspicious of my <laughs> motives or <laughs> accuse me of cheating again and cause me to lose my <laughs> mind like I did last week. So, so. Here, and, and, and this is what I've struggled with all week. Yeah. This is what I've struggled with. Uh, number one, number one, I, I don't need or want Ravens fans up my ass again, as I experienced, and I deserved it a month ago today when the Ravens beat the 49ers on Christmas night, and I had foolishly said the 49ers would kick the shit out of the Ravens. <laughs> Nobody's kicking the shit out of anybody in this game. This no. is going to be a close game. It's exactly. down to the wire, I right. hope. And, and look, th this, is, this is where I struggled. Back before the season started, we made our picks. Yeah. 
about who's going to make it to the playoffs, who's going to make it to the Super Bowl. And it's all meaningless. Nobody cares. But here we are. Here we are uh, on the brink of the Super Bowl, and I picked the Chiefs to make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, me too. How, I mean, like, how can I, I – I, like, it feels weaselly to not pick the team – that you've predicted to go to the Super Bowl before the season began when they're one game away from getting to the Super Bowl. I don't want to hedge. I mean, maybe if I had a ticket that was paying me whatever the odds would have been, they wouldn't have been very high odds for the Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl. Uh, and I'm going to hedge by picking the Ravens to win. I don't know. I, I got to stick. I got to stick with the horse that got me this far. I believed in the Chiefs then. I believe in them now. I believe in Patrick Mahomes. I've said we're witnessing history. And this may just be too much for the Ravens. If it would have been the Bills... I'd probably pick the Ravens, but the Chiefs have proven that they know how to thrive in this kind of setting, in this kind of environment. Being on the road is just enough a twist to get their attention. I got the Chiefs, and I keep going 30-27. to 27. I'm a glutton for punishment. That was the score of the 1998 NFC Championship game that the Vikings lost in overtime <laughs> to the Falcons. 30, Chiefs, Ravens, 27. I'm sorry, Ravens. And I won't be surprised if the Ravens win. I'm just sticking with the horse that brung me this far. I hear you. I don't. I, you know, you're not wrong there. Everything you said is true. I mean, it's it's the it's the Kansas City Chiefs. I like you picked them to go to the Super Bowl too and play the 49ers for part two of that matchup, right? So I I, I hear you. And then and I mean, it's it's remarkable. I mean, again, I think what they did last week was remarkable. You know, like I said, I mean, just I, what they did the week before. You know, the second to last week of the regular season, the third to last week of the regular season, they looked like, man, I think mean, they got their f asses whooped by the Raiders on Christmas Day. Like whooped. Like one of the worst performances I've seen the Chiefs ever have. To be able to turn it around and do what they're doing. I mean, you know me. I'm a little bit like, oh, play off this, play off my homes. Like that's like made up crap. But it's not with this group. It's not. That's where they're special. But call me the weasel. Call me Weasel Doodle Doo because wow. I'm going to go with the same thought that I had last week and I'm going to ride it again this week. The Chiefs, the year has been inconsistent. They tried to do dumb shit with the McCole, McCole Hardman, North Sims Jong Un, North Korea fumble in the end zone, and they still were just too good and beat the Bills. I don't think it happens this week. I think the Ravens' mission all year, one of the best teams we've seen all year. I think they're the one team that can stop this Chiefs magic. I think they do it. I'm taking Ravens 24-20. Wow. All right. So we disagree on that one. That was tough, man. You have the Ravens covering the spread as I well. Know. You I have did. the Ravens covering the spread, and you've weaseled. You've abandoned your preseason I know. Super Bowl representative from the AFC. Let's take a break. Yo, yo. What up, homies? Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to Chris Sims on Button. Right now, we got Sunday Pod, right? So you can have it Monday morning. We recap all the action. Wednesday, it's the What the F***. Happen podcast. We're going to get deep in the weeds on the key matchups of the week. And then Thursday, I'm picking games with that jerk Florio. So you know where to find us, homies. Keep watching. Peace out. We'll see you.